A visitor commented about this painting, it has the feel of the Southwest. This was very astute, since Pat Steer's mountain paintings of the early 1970s were inspired by her visits to Agnes Martin in New Mexico. Both women are painters and poets, and both have studied nature and art long enough to abstract their common essence. Looking for the mountain is a metaphor that works on many levels, linguistic, aesthetic, and philosophical. This small section functions like a traditional picture of a mountain at night under a dark sky. More likely, though, Steer was isolating for us two perceptual tools that help us recognize aspects of our world, color and silhouette. It's our remarkable ability to synthesize that allows us to turn such minimal hints into a picture. A bigger section increases the number of perceptual references. The silhouette is repeated against a pencil grid, so now we recognize it as a graph, a way of structuring information. The grid pays homage to Agnes Martin, who often paints plain grids on bare canvas. Pat Steer once said the grids stand for the intersection of time and space. In looking for the mountain, the grids are very different from the irregular drawn lines at the bare canvas edge. Those are marks, the first visual sign of our urge to communicate, as any mother can tell you. If the grids stand for a mental construct, the marks that surround them are about instinct and the desire to connect. Color is also both systematic and instinctive. Sections of color bars evoke optical systems and the spectrum, but the translucent blue stain at the left and the delicate shading of horizon lines signal change and flux rather than fact. Despite many differences, Pat Steer is carrying on an artistic enterprise that we could first date to James McNeil Whistler a century earlier. In this painting of Valparaiso Harbor, Whistler emptied the image of narrative and pictorial elements in order to unearth the deeper ways we understand nature. Both artists, I think, want us to know something fundamental about how we perceive and create the world around us. I've never seen a printed or online reproduction of this painting that could come close to showing the subtlety of these warm colors. Looking at the real painting, you notice how the painted areas have a presence and a substance distinct from the bare canvas. These colors evoke dunes, earth, flesh, and blood. The delicate pencil marks and shadings in the large field of sand, rose, coral create a rich variety of touch and expression within a narrow tonal range. Whistler would have admired that. Talking about painting is always problematic. Steer's work really is speaking for itself pretty directly, making my analysis superfluous. When she wants to, she uses words with the same deliberate intention that she uses for visual elements in her art. She wrote on one print, form, illusion, myth, the three stages of understanding. Form implies the processing of data from our senses. Illusion is the synthetic picture that we make out of this information. Myth is the meaning we attach to the image. There is so much to enjoy and think about in this painting. I'm amazed that the artist could so succinctly combine so much knowledge and feeling. I also counted among my favorites because it was given to the museum by my friend Richard Hollander, a Kansas City sculptor. He recognized in it the concerns that are common to many artists. This is part of the meaning, or the myth, for me, which I know Pat Steer would understand.